It really takes a, a group, a, a community of people to come together and rally support to meet all of the unique needs that children and families have. No one program or one one person can do it can do anything by themselves. And you know, if we if we only rely on ourselves, then we're always you know, there's always going to be some cracks and some gaps that we're missing. Um, one mantra we always um, I have everybody in my team talking about all the time um, is that teamwork makes the dream work. welcome you here today um, to the 2015 Head Start, a critical link in the early education system. Working together to promote the school readiness of homeless children was an event uh, we held in February um, and it was really uh, targeted um, because of the needs expressed by Head Start programs and early Head Start programs in relation to them building partnerships with their local education agencies and most specifically the homeless liaisons that are in local education agencies. So we decided to plan that event and use the community of practice approach. I truly believe that people are in this meeting today. Their work will look different on Monday because they didn't just sit and listen. They talked about it, and they discussed it, and they challenged themselves and each other. And I think they will go back and do something with it. I do believe that. We chose the community of practice model because it truly is a unique approach. It has three components. It utilizes knowledge building as well as skill building. And what makes the community of practice above and beyond a typical training is it adds the partnership building component. We want people to understand that community of practice is, is an approach to um, the professional development of staff that are working directly with children and families. And so if we want staff to um, build relationships with families and support them and figure out their needs and their interests and work towards those common goals, then we have to do with staff what we want staff to do with children and families. The collaboration between agencies means that, one, people are doing the job that they are trained to do. I might be able to talk with a parent about a situation um, in a gracious way. I don't mean that. But I'm not a psychologist. And it wouldn't be fair to the parent to take on a role that I'm not professionally prepared for. I know how to be a teacher. <laughs> and so I, as long as I stay within the role that I'm prepared for, then I'm much more apt to do a good job. Collaboration means that I bring together a group of people, each who functions within their role at a very high level. And we might need seven or eight different professional areas represented to do the best for the child. I'm not well trained in eight professional areas, so I honor these other folks. Learning by nature is change. We say that that T word, training word, is almost taboo now, you know, because training references that someone is the expert and they're standing in front of the room and they're spewing out the information and everyone sitting in the audience is to take it all in and to, to go back and make it work. And what we know is that if you hear something on Friday, you may be very motivated and, and um, excited and think, wow, I can change the world. But on Monday, you have that staff person or that parent and child that walks into your office and, and something happens and some of that gets lost. Whereas with the community of practice, we're building that network of support. You know, we, we saw today people were making connections. Um, some of that is accountability. You know, people will hold each other accountable and make those phone calls and say, hey, remember we met and, you know, let's, let's make this happen kind of thing. So it's, it's not left to just that individual to kind of face it on their own. Well, a community of practice has to do with honoring and appreciating people, the people who do the job. 
and it's real easy to set up a program, develop policies and procedures, get a curriculum and say go forth and do it. But what we know is the important element is that person, whether it's a teacher, a social worker, a center manager, a director, how they do their work is really the key. There's a lot of passion that comes in working for Head Start. And when you bring individuals together with their ideas, with their personalities, it takes a skilled facilitator to keep us on focus, to make sure that um, we are receiving the education from one another that we came that day to learn and grow with. And a skilled facilitator keeps us on target for that. They help us um, to balance the conversation in the room so that everyone has an opportunity to offer their insight or to ask questions of one another. Um, if it weren't for that expertise of a skilled facilitator, I don't believe we would be as successful. A facilitator in a community of practice uh, does have to balance uh, offering content and expertise, um, but also have an ability to engage uh, the participants. And so I think what makes a facilitator different in a community of practice is that facilitator is a well-trained individual who can bring the knowledge piece of this and work with participants and guide them through um, uh, their personal growth and professional development and also work with them to turn that growth into a more action-focused uh, next step. It's different from a traditional training approach where people, where someone is standing up in front of the, the room and is the giver of knowledge. Uh, in a community of practice, everyone is a participant and, and we expect everybody to share their experiences. Um, we have a lot of staff that you know are on the ground and, and working directly with children and families and that's where we're, we're going to gain the most from um, what we need to do in order to, to support them. From my viewpoint, training um, does absolutely have a role, but for long-term uh, systemic, meaningful change in our programs, I think the community practice is the way to go. A training to me is one individual who instructs you on a given topic and then you go home and based upon what you learn that day you apply those parameters that they set for you. A community practice, however, is an idea is introduced to you and then as part of your uh, participation all individuals are offering their insight or their personal viewpoint of that, including your own. You have to hear your own vantage point to really buy into this as well and apply it back home. The community of practice offers that conversation and we have the belief, the true belief, that everyone in that room is an expert in what they're doing and that we need to hear from individuals to add to our learning and add to our professional growth. What community of practice does is it folds in partnership building and, re and relationship building. So you have one offering that branches into knowledge building, skill building, and relationship building. When it comes to the community of practice, another piece that's instrumental to its success is the, the action plan that you develop as an individual before you leave. So at a community of practice, there are topics that are discussed and the participants at the community of practice take steps that they're planning to use back in their programs. Those steps, that's what that action plan is. It's the steps that they are going to take to implement that topic. Whatever the topic was at the community of practice, it's their plan or the steps that they're going to take back to their programs and implement and develop. And then we ask the questions when we get to one part of the pro process where we ask about their living situation and they're not living their own home. So action plans are very intentional plans. Action plans that are developed really take into consideration uh, the, the knowledge of what a participant or agency has garnered from a community of practice, um, but it also brings together those resources and those connections 
Um, it takes into consideration specific next steps and more long-term uh, next steps that whether it's an individual action plan or an agency action plan, it takes all of that, brings it together to formulate a very specific plan. There are many parts that are very, very important to make it a community of practice and the action we call the plan for excellence is absolutely a huge part of that. Why a community of practice is different than a training in part is that you are bringing in experts in the field of Head Start or in early care and education. We are coming together talking about one item of that day from many different vantage points. Um, and that plan is the piece that individuals take apart and say, this is what I know I can do right now, and I know that my team is going to follow back up with me, um, those that are participating in my COP plan of action. That's really important because it's very easy to go back into your everyday life, and if you don't have a plan to hold yourself accountable, then you know you might let you know all those great ideas kind of slip to the wayside and you know get caught up back up in you know the day to day grind. So having that action plan and, and whether you're communicating with your supervisor or you have you know someone else who who can support you in following through with that and being you know being accountable. Uh, I think that's a really important piece to the whole process is just um, ensuring that follow through after you leave it. I think of community practice as a puzzle. Okay, and so where, you know, there's this ultimate goal and vision that we all have, um, and usually that's positive outcomes for children and families, right? And so if you think of a puzzle, um, you think that only this piece of puzzle can only help maybe with the education piece. Well, maybe this piece of puzzle can help with dental care. Then maybe this piece of puzzle can do all the different things. So if you put pieces, if you put community and give them different pieces to that puzzle, I mean, in order to make a beautiful masterpiece, the only way it'll work is if we come together. One, if we communicate. And so meetings like this with us talking, knowing what other people are doing. Um, you know, during the break, I was handing people that in St. Louis, handing them my, my cards, um, just because they're there while I'm there, but I know they're doing different things that we're not doing. So finding out what everybody's doing um, and realizing that we can't do everything. And I think sometimes, um, organizations and people, we think we try to do everything on our own, but we're not experts in everything. Give them a better understanding of how to approach parents that might be in crisis situations, and it just breaks it down on how you would notice it, how you would approach it, and it just makes it easier for them to do their jobs. And we, our, our program can't do it alone, <laughs> and the more that we can engage with school districts, with other community organizations, with community leaders then we find more innovative ways to support each other in having um, really rallying, rallying behind families and behind children in a, in a better way than, than we can do by ourselves. When we all get together and we, we start talking about what is going to benefit the children and families that, that we serve, I, as a facilitator, I don't work directly in a program, but I, as a facilitator, walk away with lots of examples and lots of ideas. So in my role then in working with Head Start programs around the state, I can then take each of those different ideas and apply it so it's, it's not just something that's happening here, it's something that not only do we as facilitators take those things away, I think that programs take those things away and, and share it with other organizations out in their own communities. A community of practice is, is much bigger than what's just in this room. By those kids who are in our programs who also got kids at the public schools or any other school districts that you know to see where what are you working with the family and doing so that way we won't be overlapping each other and that way we can you come together and you find common ground and um, you learn that you actually have many of the same goals and for the purpose of the community pra of practice usually there is a goal or a vision that's identified for that community of practice for me collaboration means with other agencies, other people, or whatever, it means that we bring everything together to provide this high level, consistent, not just in content, but in approach to people. I 
I think when, when we think about the community of practice um, um, as a tool for professional development, and not only as we think about it, we, we know, we've seen it across the state. We've done it at a state level, programs are doing it locally, and when we talk about building capacity in direct service staff, and when we talk about reducing staff turnover, we're talking about community practice as a solution to some of those issues because teachers or home visitors or parents, they're coming together with that, that focused interest and they're able to share ideas. So I can say, uh, without a doubt, uh, Missouri has experienced success with the, with the community of practice approach. I think three key activities demonstrate that success. One, the ongoing participation of programs uh, and staff time in the state level offerings. Two, we're seeing uh, those programs going back into their local communities and developing their local community of practice. And third, we have 100% uh, of programs that are participating in community practices having developed their own action plans. From the 100% of participation, we have approximately 50% of grantees that are reporting progress with those action plans. We have a, a bigger vision and, and we can start to see how we all fit in to that. And it saves us time. You know, you build relationships with others that you can go back and now it only takes a phone call to get my answer because I know, you know, Sally from Children's Division versus before, you know, I might have to go through this chain of command and wait for people to, you know, call back. So, I mean, it really is this great relationship building opportunity. I can tell you that I don't think we will ever offer professional development in the same way now that we know the community of practice approach works so well. 